Hi folks, hello, another fat bearded man talking about records here. But you can call me Headley, as everyone else seems to. Um, I've been buying quite a few records recently and without messing around I'm going to do a quick uh, rundown of the recent new purchases I've made. Um, i.e. Um, new brand new records, spanking brand new, spanking brand new records. Um, and uh, some of them are some great deals I got. Um, all of them I picked up uh, over the internet, um, I think mostly Amazon. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to do another video showing some uh, older secondhand stuff. But until then, I will get on with the new stuff. So here we go. So the first one um, is The Birds Sanctuary. Um, this was released in 2000. Um, it's on the Sunday's uh, music label. Now, I am a big Graham Parsons fan, um, and the fourth volume of this um, is all outtakes and um, alternate versions from the sessions for uh, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. So I was after that and I ordered this on Amazon from a, um, one of the sellers, you know, the um, marketplace sellers. And they sent me this one, the first volume. And I got so excited, opened it up, was about to put it on and realised it was the wrong record. So I contacted them. Uh, they said, oh, I'm terribly sorry, we don't have that one. Um, so, but we'll refund you and you can keep the record. Um, so, <laughs> a freebie. Um, this is, for people who don't know, um, a bunch of, like I said, the rarities. But this one being the first one is a bunch of outtakes, alternate versions, single versions of uh, songs from 1965 to 67. Sort of some of, I suppose that's their first three albums. Um, so Mr. Tambourine Man, uh, Turn, 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 and, oh, what's the other one? Uh, Younger Than Yesterday, or is it Fifth Dimension? Anyway, certainly they're between uh, 65 and, and 67. And it sounds great, and it's lovely, and I'm not overly familiar with the original, so I can't really tell you um, the differences, but it sounds very nice. Um, I think there's a couple of unreleased... Yeah, one called Psychodrama, um, which, yeah, that's from Fifth Dimension, um, of course, with a, name, with a title like that. Um, is that a Cosby? Crosby, not Cro Cosby. It's a Cosby sweater. Um, yeah, I think it is a Crosby song. And then there is another one called The Day Walk as well, um, which is... Um, Oh, that's Gene Clark. So there are some some uh, uh, unique songs that are only available. Um, they were released on a box set. They then came out on CDs, and these have been released four volumes so far. That's probably all there's going to be. Anyway, I'm going to shut up because that's, I think, enough you've seen about that. So, um, as is my one, I was sort of stumbling around Amazon and looking for various things. And I'm always looking for a bargain, and I came across one. Uh, I think I only paid a tenner for this, and this is uh, the countryside of Harmonica Sam, open letter to the blues. Now this, it's a great looking cover, isn't it? Um, now you'd have thought that this is probably a, a rare record from the late 50s, early 60s, but it isn't. Um, it is uh, honky-tonk music, um, kind of from that era played by a Swedish band um, and um, it's mostly um, uh, songs that the band have written the, there is a I think there's a cover of a Billy Walker song on here um, a couple of others maybe but mostly written by the band which is really nice some of these sort of retro bands and sort of things are kind of a bit of a one joke one note joke one joke no no 
a one note joke and you know they outstay their welcome they're kind of funny and interesting but this it sounds like the real deal it's very very good indeed um there are other albums that i might might try to pick up um but it's a nice um nice label as well so this is on bullseye this is from 2015 um yeah on bullseye and el toro yeah i'm not sure which is the the bigger label and which is the smaller one anyway so that's that's really nice stuff um if you like uh traditional honky tonk music okay the next one two three four are records i picked up for amazon um um due to a price glitch um probably not albums i necessarily would have bought but when they should be what around you know 20 quid or something like that and they're being being, being advertised at three pounds you know you you've got to <laughs> you've got to give them a go haven't you um some of them were familiar to me some not um so these were all three pounds and all of these i bought at least two copies of so i'd I've given away um, one so far. Uh, the first one is some jazz. This is um, uh, Shamek Farah, um, First Impressions. This is originally from 1974, 74, um, on Strata East Records. But um, this is a nice, a nice record. Um, I'm going to show you the label. Uh, I was a bit worried when I heard the first song song tune cut track um it's a little bit busy for me it's a little bit um free form a little bit all over the place which i'm not a big fan of in jazz um however um after that it, it really calms down it's very nice there's some very laid back um uh, sort of almost funky tunes on here in fact the the, the track first impressions I, uh, I believe it was um, sampled by a tribe called Quest, um, which is probably why this has been released and it's been sought after. Um, so it was originally from '74, released in t uh, this year, and yeah, I'm really pleased to have have that for my uh, collection of jazz. Um, nice stuff. Okay, um, another one that I picked up as, as for three quid um, is this one: Pete Drake, the fabulous steel guitar sound of. Uh, this was originally on Star Day from 1962, I think. Um, and yeah, this kind of looks like that. So it kind of sits alongside the um, the harmonica Sam, doesn't it? As a sort of a style of, of album cover. Um, and yeah, this is um, a instrumental album. Pete Drake is probably one of the most famous Nashville uh, pedal star, ped pedal, pedal guitar players. Here he is. And this isn't strictly country music at all, really, although it's on the Star Day label. Um, it is more kind of loungy, more um, uh, easy listening, um, but kind of kind of groovy stuff. And you have songs like Galaxy um, and uh, The Spook, um, Stargazing. So there's a slight sense of that kind of cocktail lounge um, kind of... Um, what was it sort of you know the space age kind of stuff and it sounds quite space age some of this but very nice very nice album um, let's have a look at the the record itself it's on a red record on Star Day although it's not really Star Day is it um, it's um, the label it's called Modern Harmonic is the uh, the label it's actually released on um, but that's uh, yeah very nice I guess. and um, Nice to put on on an evening to relax to that. Okay, another kind of uh, funky kind of thing here is Ananda Shankar. Now, An Ananda Shankar um, is a sitar player uh, from India. And uh, the name might be familiar to you. He is the nephew of Ravi Shankar, the famous uh, sitar player and uh, personal friend of the Beatles. Um, this is from 1974. Five, um, but uh, re-released this year. Um, it is a funky sitar uh, album. Um, yeah, seventies kind of um, funky stuff um, with sitar work, 
He's got a couple of others, certainly another one that's perhaps more famous than this one, his first one that he did. So it, it's, um, yeah, really good. There's a really nice, although there's sort of funky stuff, there's a really nice track called Dawn, which um, is a very relaxed sort of, uh, I think, as you can, you can imagine the, the, the sun rising over the Ganges, and um, it's very sort of mystical, rather boring label. But yeah, I'm really pleased to get hold of that. Nice, um, slightly cheesy, funky sitar music. Now, if we're talking funky and cheesy, we've hit the um, <laughs> we've hit the gold mine here. Um, this is um, called uh, Spanish Moog. It's kind of interesting the way the way they've got the the different languages all over it. Um, this is by a guy called uh, Alfonso. Uh, San Santisteban? Santisteban. Um, Alfonso Santisteban. And it is library music. It is um, that kind of... Again, this is from 75, so same same year as the Ananda Shankar. And it is uh, library music. It's funky, Moog-driven uh, uh, library music. Apparently... Um, Santisteban um, recorded about uh, five albums of uh, library music in Spain in the uh, in the 1970s. Um, he did sort of film soundtracks as well for Spanish films, and yeah, nice stuff. It's got a nice um, kind of uh, uh, insert which tells you all about him, which is great. And there's some pictures of him, <laughs> groovy guy. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased to have that. But like I said, I mean that's not something I would ever buy new for twenty quid. But it's great, and I really like listening to it. Um, um, it's um, yeah, not as kind of space agey Moog stuff as some of the sort of Moog albums you you find. Um, the Moog often takes kind of back seat to the or orchestration, but nice, nice, nice. Okay, so that's the last of those um, cheapo albums. Uh, the next one is not a cheapo album. And um, to be honest with you, it was a little bit disappointing. It's um, a band called Jenny and the Mexicats. Um, and this is an album called Open Sea or Mar Abarito in Spanish. And it's kind of a groovy cover, isn't it? Sort of cartoony, I like that. Um, I first heard this band on a, um, a Tiny Desk concert, all, can, all things considered um, Tiny Desk concerts, which are really great to watch, and they introduce you to all kinds of new music. And this was one of them, the band. Um, now, the thing about the small desk concerts is they're often acoustic, they're often stripped down versions of the sort of stuff the bands play. So I was kind of slightly misled listening to it, to what this would sound like. Um, this, um, by, by, by the way, it, it is um, Jenny, um, I can't remember her name, Jenny, I bet it doesn't say anywhere. Jenny, oh hang on, there are some names here. Jenny Ball, she's British and she's a jazz trumpeter originally. And she uh, met up with a couple of Mexican guys and they started working together, and um, there's some Spanish um, players as well, so it's kind of like a, a multicultural group. Um, I think they're very big in Germany. I don't know if that's where they're all based. Um, and um, it is um, kind of uh, Latin-y, Cuban-esque, um, sort of flamenco-sounding uh, mariachi almost music um, a bit not too far from the Gypsy Kings this sounds some of it it is for me a little bit overproduced I would like it to be far more of the as they were on the Tiny Desk concert um, a little bit kind of more more relaxed more um, more organic and it's kind of quite um, I don't know tight I mean it's, it's good stuff I mean actually um if you like Mano Chao, do you mean Mano Chao? 
he's he sounds some of this, and there's also bits of reggae in here, so it's a bit of a kind of a big multi multicultural hodgepodge. But I'll I'll give it some more listens, and, and I, th I think it'll I think it'll perhaps grow on me. Um, I mean, I like the Gypsy Kings, so maybe it's just I was surprised that it wasn't what I was expecting it to be. I think that's what can happen. So if you step back, reassess, actually you find you do like it. So that's Jenny and the Mexicats. Check out their Tiny Desk concert, it's really good. Okay, and finally I'm going to finish with um, a couple of the Tom Waits remasters. The first one um, I got recently. Um, they've been really releasing these, releasing these in batches. They did all the, the latest stuff um, last year. I picked up a couple of those cheap as well on Amazon, actually. Um, and they're now working through the early... Um, the Asylum, was it? I think it was, wasn't it? So this is from 74, and I didn't actually pick up... Pick up, pick up. No, I didn't pick up. I didn't pick up Closing Time, which I'm not quite sure why. Um, I probably will. I might go back and try and pick that up. But this is his second album, um, The Heart of Saturday Night, and this is probably... Probably my favourite, um, Push Comes to Shove, my favourite Tom Waits album. I think it's a perfect, perfect album. It's certainly the album of his I've listened to the most. Um, I like the way it sound, It fe feels like a, a complete suite, a piece of itself. Um, it kind of sits... I mean, it's different from all his other albums. It's similar sounding, but this is, I think... I like the way it ends with... Each, each side ends with... Um, you've got The Heart of Saturday Night on uh, side one, and you've got The Ghosts of Saturday Night on side two. So you've got that idea. Late night, um, got to be played late night, this. This is sort of early hours of the morning sort of stuff. Um, yeah, my favourite Tom Waits. Today it's my favourite Tom Waits. And a close second, actually, and I suppose it's because it's from a similar period. 1974's Night Hawks at the Diner. So this is a double... Um, live at well it's not really a live album it was there's a lot of albums that were produced around this time in the mid 70s that purport to be live performances but actually what they were were they were um they're in the studio but they invited a load of guests and plied them with booze um and it also meant that they could overdub and stuff like that and make any changes later on so they're not technically live but um you know, most of it is. And it's some of some stripped back stuff, just him and a piano or him and a guitar. Um, it's got an interesting cover of um, Big Joe and Phantom 309, the old country trucker song, which he totally makes his own. Um, yeah, and the thing I really like about this, and this is what they, they, they tended to do in the 70s, is they're not songs, although it's a live album, they're not songs from his previous records. Um you know, or ones that would turn up on a later one. They're, they're the only way you will find these these songs. Um, yeah, and of course you get him talking in between, which is one of the one of the draws as well. So yeah, so um, Tom waits, waiting for the heart of no, not waiting for the heart of Saturday night. <laughs> um, Nighthawks at the diner. So there you go. That's your lot. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye for now. <laughs>